What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing a team that I'd have never seen myself running just last season on this channel, but of course all three of these Pokemon that were previously dominant meta monsters have received at least two nerfs to their moveset this season, with Vigoroth actually having three nerfs to its moveset, meaning they are no longer a threat in the current meta. But as is usually the case with Pokemon Go, as soon as something gets nerfed, everyone just assumes that that Pokemon is now completely useless, when in actual fact it might not be as bad as you think. Also a lot of people no longer team build with those heavily nerfed Pokemon in mind, so whilst this Pokemon might not be as strong as it used to be, because people aren't expecting to see it, they might build teams that are double or even triple weak to that Pokemon. Now I'll be honest, it did feel really weird using these Pokemon because those of you that have watched my channel before will know that I like to stay well clear of using meta Pokemon, but even though these Pokemon no longer fall into that category, it still felt like I was using overpowered Pokemon, but it just felt like I was really rubbish at the game because of course they are no longer as strong as they used to be. But anyways, with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. Which Pokemon that received a nerf this season do you think is actually still pretty good in the current meta? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so going into the first battle, it's Shadow Gygar into Flygon. So, of course, they are going to be running Dragon Tail, which means we don't resist the fast move. If they're running either Sand Attack or Mud Shot, then that would have been alright. But they're going to swap into Talonflame, and I'll be honest, Talonflame was the biggest issue for this team. You might look at the team thinking, well, you've got two Rock Side users in the back, but it does, of course, take more fast moves to make it to Rock Side for both of those Pokemon this season, because all three of these Pokemon had Energy Generation nerfs to their fast moves this season. But, we do grab both shields from the Talon Flame. We're going to come in with the Vigoroth. I'm going to no shield the first move. Don't expect them to go straight for a Brave Bird. They go for a Flame Charge. They do go for the extra Incinerate, so this could be a Brave Bird. Either way, I'm going to shield anyways. They go for the Brave Bird, and I'm actually going to swap into my Stunfisk, get a slight energy advantage, but they've got double fire in the back, but they swap back into Flygon. Now, of course, they do have enough energy for a Scorching Sands. I'm going to shield, and Scorching Sands does debuff my attack, so I'm going to go for an Earthquake here, and I need to undercharge this. I go for the Undercharge. Earthquake doesn't do as much damage and can we get the farm down we get the perfect farm down there they could have thrown a dragon claw but that would not be enough damage to get the ko and as a result we come out with the earthquake loaded earthquake gets the ko despite being debuffed up against the nine tails and i'm able to take that game so GG's to up over there, into next battle, gonna see a Dunsparce in the lead. So this used to be a pretty good matchup for Shadow Gligar. Unfortunately, because our pacing just isn't that great this season, I think this will be a negative matchup for us, but I'm gonna swap, make a catch onto my Galarian Stunfisk, hopefully catching a Rock Side. We do catch the Rock Side, which is double resisted, by the way. And at this point, we can also tank a Drill Run very comfortably. So we're gonna no shield once again, they go for the Drill Run, and they're now gonna come in with a Shadow Quagsire. But like us, Mudshot did get an Energy Generation nerf, so they don't make it to the Aquatel before we're able to fire off an Earthquake, and at this point, I'm going to let this move go through. The opponent's going to go for a Mud Bomb there, which is pretty telling. It means they're not going to be running Aquatel, which means to take out my Shadow Gligar, they're going to have to go for a Stone Edge. So I can actually over farm just slightly here, fire off an Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace grabs a Shield, so at this point, I'm definitely going to respect the damage here. Shielding up the Stone Edge, and the opponent is going to swap back into Dunsparce. They try to snipe with the Rock Side here, but I'm able to catch it onto my Vigor off, and that's great because Rock Side does do significant less damage than Drill Run this season, and we actually get a full counter farm down there. Honestly, I'm not sure. I think the opponent probably stutter lag there. I think they should have made it to a charge move, but honestly, at this point, this game is just in shambles right now. Stutters all the time, and we've lost so many games because of stutter lag, so if we do end up winning this one because of it, then it will. I'll feel a little bit bad about it, but either way, we've, we've lost so many games. At this point, we just need to make sure the opponent doesn't make a catch. They're not able to do so, and as a result, the opponent just concedes the match there. In actual fact, I think if they did fire off the charge move, I think we would have been fine anyways. We still had a shield remaining, but either way, into next battle, and GG's to that opponent, by the way. We're going to lead into Whiskash. We're going to go and fire off the Aerial Ace, and just like us, once again, pacing is going to be a bit of an issue for that Shadow Whiskash, as it now takes at least seven mud shots to make it to that first scald, whereas before, it used to be six, and then five, I think, to the next one. But either way, I'm going to go fire off Aerial Ace, number two, then swapping into my Vigoroth, catching the next scald onto my Vigoroth, at least I hope it's going to be a scald here. They do fire off the scald, and they come with Meganium, and this is where Vigoroth as a safe swap just just nowhere near as strong as it used to be. The pacing is awful, Body Sam doesn't do much damage, and even as coverage, Rockside also not dealing as much damage there. So if they came in with like a fire type Pokemon, a Rockside isn't as threatening as it used to be. Actually, Rockside 
doesn't even do enough damage to one-shot a Talonflame, which is pretty embarrassing for a double super effective charge speed. But either way, gonna come back in with the Gligar. I think I can go for a full farm down. City Post swaps back into Whiskash. And honestly, I think I panic here. I think I might have been able to go for a full farm down up against the Whiskash as well. But we do throw the energy, and they're gonna come in with a Talonflame. And Talonflame, like I mentioned, very difficult for me to deal with. If I grab a shield here, we should be okay. But unfortunately, not able to do so. Possibly should have stayed in with my Gligar there and trying to uh, make it to another area lace. But either way, it's going to be game over. The opponent will be shielding and they're playing very smart here. They're going to farm to 100 energy before they throw a charge move. And this is just game over. Fly actually doesn't take us out there. So the opponent does have to swap back into Meganium. But they're now able to make it to a charge move because they do farm us down. Frenzy Plant gets the KO. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. So GG's top opponent there, I wonder if they were running Fly and Brave Bird. Either way, they still get the win, so GG's. But into the next battle, gonna see a Dunce Pass in the lead once again. So last time, I was able to catch a Charge Reef, and we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Catching, hopefully, a Rock Side onto our Stunfisk, which is very nice. Baiting out Superior, which isn't very nice, but either way, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna fire off some Rock Sides here. We're gonna go for the first one. Rock Side does pretty pretty miserable damage there i have to be honest the opponent's gonna go for a grass knot though so this is in this isn't even a community day superior they're running grass knot which means they're not running frenzy plant rock side number two still not going to do that much damage but it does mean that they have to throw slightly more fast moves to make it to those grass knots compared to a frenzy plant we can now come back in with the gligar firing off an aerial ace aerial ace gets the ko there they're gonna come back in with the dunce pass i can live a single rock side pretty comfortably here so i'm gonna let that go through we're now gonna go and full send the dig if they shield this i'm probably gonna swap into my vigor off the opponent does shield so we swap into vigor off and the opponent comes in with a smackdown chest knot so i believe this is a team that yonkers showcased already this season and at this point we're looking pretty good here especially if the opponent is lagging like they're doing here again very unfortunate for them, but either way, we're just going to continue to go for a full counter farm down. If I need to shield something, I will just shield there, but the opponent doesn't make it to another charge move. At this point, this is game over, despite the energy generation nerf to counter, and of course, the fact that Body Slam doesn't deal as much damage. This game is over, so I think at this point, the opponent has just conceded the match, or Rage quit the app or something, I don't know. Either way, GG's to that opponent there. Into next battle, we're going to see Shadow Gligar into Nidoqueen. So, two Pokemon that have been nerfed. Of course, Nidoqueen still reasonably usable here with the Poison Jab and Poison Fang combination, but this is a really good matchup for us, despite being nerfed, because we're just going to resist everything unless they are running Stone Edge, which would be neutral, and actually would be pretty good here. But either way, we full send the Dig. Dig gets the KO. They're going to come in with a Noctowl. So, running another nerfed Pokemon, although Noctowl also secretly got a slight buff because Nightshade is now a pretty good charge move but they can't throw it into Vigoroth so they have to go for sky attack there they then swap into a razor leaf ivysaur which is a very interesting pick here not really sure it's that good but either way gonna go for a body slam grabbing a shield there and razor leaf also getting nerfed so running a basically a triple nerf team on the opponent's end as well so pretty interesting to see either way gonna make it to another body slam and you're gonna see body slam just not gonna do that much damage here but we can come back in with the gligar and basically just forcing the opponent to throw their energy at this point I should be able to just come in with my Stunfisk and go for a full Mudshot farm down. So we're going to do exactly that. We're going to wait out the Switch Lock first, come in with the Stunfisk, and actually because Mudshot does deal more damage, we do at least get the farm down there and the opponent just concedes the match. So GG to up over there into the next battle. We're going to see Gligar into Licky Licky. Now, this is a fairly neutral matchup once again. They can be running Body Sam, Shadow Ball, maybe Earthquake, or even Solar Beam, or maybe Hyper Beam. I actually don't know if this, if this thing learns Hyper Beam. Either way, it's got quite a lot of charge views. They do just go for the Body Sam there, so that's fine with me. And I think, again, I'm going to try and make a catch onto my Stunfisk, and we do catch the charge view. Hopefully, they don't just randomly go for an Earthquake here. And no, they go for the Body Sam, fine with me. They're now going to come in with a Makargo, and that's also fine with me me so i can outpace them to the first charge move rockside is going to grab a shield here and i don't expect them to full send an overheat straight away so i'm actually going to no shield and it's just the rock tomb that's double resisted damage i will make it to the earthquake we do throw it on very poor timing but honestly i don't think one extra mud shot is really going to make that much of a difference in terms of farming them down with my vigoroth in the end game so either way gonna grab the final shield there come in with the vigoroth 
And in this one, I'm going to definitely shield this. The opponent does bait with another Rock Tomb, but that's okay. They're going to come in with Swampert, which is a little bit tricky for me, just because they now debuff my attack. We're already not dealing that much damage with the Body Sam, so I'm essentially just waiting for them to throw a Charge Reef here, and then I will swap into my Shadow Gligar. The opponent goes for the Hydro Cannon, doesn't do that much damage. We're going to swap into Gligar. I'm able to make it to the Aerial Ace before they get off a Charge Move, but Aerial Ace just doesn't do enough damage there, which is very unfortunate. But this one, I'm going to shield this, so they go for the Hydro Cannon. I couldn't remember how much... Uh, uh, health the Licky Licky had in the lead there. So we're going to go for an Aerial Ace here. Aerial Ace will, of course, get the KO. The opponent will be able to come back in with their Licky Licky. And at this point, they're going to make it to a charge move. If they're at back to back charge moves, we lose this game. But they go for a Body Sam and they're not. But for some reason, I thought they still had a shield remaining. So I didn't throw my charge move. They go for Body Sam and I'm like, wait what have i done like i could have just thrown the body slam there that's such a dumb play I'm, like usually i do my battles quite late at night so i'll use the excuse that oh i was tired you know i've you know whatever but i just had no excuse this time around that was just such a stupid play but gg's to the opponent anyways the opponent's gonna go and land a dragon claw with their fly gone they're swapping into dunspar so we swap into bigger off after landing the dig here and at this point I should be able to shield once and then just fully counter farm them down and whilst of course the body slam isn't going to be as threatening as it used to be, well at least you can see I tried to throw a charge reef there but we started there so I don't get off a charge reef so instead I will have to use a shield and go for the farm down to come back in with the shadow fly gone I should still be fine here so we're going to go for one counter firing off the body slam, body slam probably going to grab a shield, it does grab the shield but I'm able to make it to another body slam very easily so we're going to fire off the next body slam, body slam goes unshielded and they come in with a Claude Sire. And at this point, this is going to be game over. Luckily for me, of course, triple resisting the Poison Sting damage. So even if they do land an Earthquake, it's just not going to be enough damage there to allow them to farm me down. They will have to land another Earthquake because the other charge moves that they could throw are going to be at least double or even triple resisted here. But either way, the opponent goes for a Sludge Bomb, which is triple resisted. So actually, they were running Stone Edge, double resisted and Sludge Bomb, which means that's a really, really positive matchup for us. And as a result, we come out with a Rock Side Load we throw it straight away into the Flygon and the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG's to opponent there. I do wonder if they are intentionally running Stone Edge and Sludge Bomb or if it's just a TM issue because I personally don't have any charged TMs whatsoever and we're in the middle of a Team Rocket event which is not very good for me at all but luckily for me or I say luckily not that luckily but I haven't really seen any new shadow Pokemon that I would consider using TMs on anyway so it's not the worst thing ever either way they're gonna come in with the diggers B I'm actually not gonna fight that hard for switch advantage I'm gonna throw just before they make it to the next charge move as we fire off the body Sam and this is a matchup where of course if we were faster to those body Sams and if body Sam did slightly more damage then I could have very easily took that matchup even going down a shield but either way we come in with the glass we get the wing attack farm down. They're going to come in with their shadow of Bomber Snow. And I'm going to fire for an area ace before swapping into my Galarian Stunfish. So at this point, I'm going to no shield this charge move as the opponent is going to go and full send the energy ball, which actually does a lot of damage. And it debuffs my defense, which is not ideal. And again, Rockside going to be nerfed this season. So it doesn't get the KO. They swap into Quagsire. And this is absolutely awful for me because the opponent can go for a huge mud shot farm down here. Earthquake does not do enough damage to put them in to wing attack farm down range and yeah this is just hugely problematic if they're running Aquatel, it's going to be game over and they are so i'm of course going to double shield here i'm going to play to my wing condition which is hopefully going for a wing attack farm down but i'm not going to be able to get there i don't think we win cmp up against quagsire it might be close honestly i don't know we do throw the charge move just because i figured they're going to swap back into their bomber snow airy lace gets the ko but they can actually just resisted mud shot far me down and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG to up over there into the next battle. We can see a Diggers beat in the lead. So this is okay for us. If they're running Hyper Beam, then honestly, that would do a lot of damage. But I'm just going to no shield the first charge move. And the opponent goes for a Scorching Sands, which is double resisted. I don't really have a clue why they threw that. But they're going to swap into Dunsparce now. So we're going to go and fire off a Dig. I was debuffed in my attack, but we've seen already Dig is going to be fine. This will allow me to commit to one shield and then just fully counter farming them down. Because the energy generation, not as great this season. It actually means that I will come out with a decent amount of energy here. I'm not going to go over 100 energy because I'm actually just not getting to 100 energy because counter not generating energy that quickly. But they come in with a Talonflame and now this is actually going to be pretty tricky for us. 
but the opponent is going to shield the first one. I'm going to commit to the double rock sides here. I figure there's no point in baiting. I'm not going to make it to another charge move. Anyways, we're now going to swap into my Stunfisk, and the opponent is actually going to swap out of that matchup, which definitely is not ideal. I can live one charge move, so I'm going to no shield the first one. They go for Scorching Sands there. They don't get the attack debuff, so I'm actually going to farm to 100 energy before throwing here. And we're going to go for the Earthquake. Earthquake does some decent damage we're gonna make it to a rock side here and rock side should hopefully put them into counter farm down range but the opponent is going to massively over farm so at this point they go for a fire punch fire punch gets the code they swap back into town of flame immediately here and i can't really swap into my vigor off because I'm not going to make it to a rock side, but I might be able to make it to a body Sam. So, of course, going to have to shield up the fly here. Going to swap into Vigoroth, and we are going to make it to the body Sam. So, at this point, we put them into body Sam range. So, body Sam gets the KO. They're going to come back in with the Diggers B, and all we need to do here is live a fire punch, which we should be able to do pretty comfortably. Fire punch doesn't get the KO. We can wing attack, farm down the Diggers B, and we're able to take that game. So GG to open there into the next battle, you can see Gligar into Jump Bluff. So this should be a pretty good matchup for us. But of course, with the energy generation, it's not going to be as dominant as you might think. So we're going to no shield the first charge move. The opponent goes for the energy ball there. And we're actually not going to make it to back-to-back -back aerial aces before the opponent makes it to an energy ball and an aerial ace, which means we're actually going to lose the zero shield scenario, which is pretty embarrassing considering we're hitting for only super effective damage. They can only hit for neutral damage. And as well, we come in with our vigor off and they're able to make it to yet another aerial ace, which not going to do that much damage, but it does chip us fairly well. They're not going to come in with the Diggers B, so... Interesting to see what they've got in the back, if this is their best response to a Vigor off. But like I've mentioned already, we're just not that threatening with these body Sams anymore. And as well, not getting them to getting to them as quickly as we used to. I'm gonna swap and catch a fire punch. You might think that's a very odd decision here, but of course, I'm predicting that they might have like double normal types in the back. And if they are, if they're running like Dunspars, for example, then both a scorching sands and a Drill Run from a Dunsparce is going to do more damage than the Fire Punch, so to me it makes sense for me to catch that move there. You go for the Earthquake, they actually shield that up there, which means, of course, I could have gotten away with going for a Rockside, but Rockside would not get the KO there. We're now going to swap back into our Vigor off, and they are running Dunsparce here, so I'm going to go for one counter, firing off the Charge Move. They got off one Rollout there. We're going to make it to a second Body Sam. I think Rollout would have taken us out there. So Body Sam does get them fairly low, but they're already at Charge Move, so they must have got off two Rollout rollouts there as they came in with the Dunsparce, which of course they shouldn't have been able to do so but as a result it means i'm not going to make it to back to back charge views here we're going to go and fire off the rock side rock side grabs the shield i don't think a rock side would get the ko anyway so i think in the end it wouldn't really matter but either way it's still a very frustrating game there but ggs to the opponent there into next battle i'm going to see a shadow quagsire in the lead now quagsire like talonflame is also pretty difficult for my team to deal with Although this opponent is actually over farming quite considerably, meaning they might not be running Aquatel here. So I'm actually going to swap, catch the charge reef, and you're going to see this is going to backfire massively as they went for a mud bomb bait which of course is double resisted by the Shadow Gligar, but either way, they're gonna go and farm another Mud Bomb, and I can commit to a full counter farm down, which isn't the worst thing ever, but still just definitely not ideal for me. They're gonna come in with a dub wall, so of course, we're gonna hit full super effective damage with the counters, but we only get off two counters there, and again, Body Slam just not dealing that much damage up against this dub wall, but likewise, they're also gonna be running bo uh, Body Slam here, but they are over farming. They're gonna farm up to a potential payback before they do throw, so I think I will consider using a shield here, if they are running payback, then it's worthwhile shielding. It is just a body sound though, so of course, that wouldn't do much damage. And they swap into a Diggers B now. We're in a little bit of a tricky situation here. I'm going to go far off the dig. I'm going to wait for them to throw their energy. But they do farm up a considerable amount before throwing a charge move. They go for Scorching Sands once again. So Scorching Sands, it's going to be resisted damage. I don't really understand why they threw that. But either way, going to go for the Aerial Ace. Maybe they are running Hyper Beam. I'm not really sure. I'm trying to make it to an Aerial Ace, but I realize I'm probably not going to get there. So I have to swap out. But I've basically just given them a huge energy advantage. So things are no longer looking too good for us. But I'm going to show the next move. And again, they go for Scorching Sands. So at this point, I'm thinking they must be running Hyper Beam as the secondary charge move. They swap back into the double though so actually if they're not running payback here this is going to be absolutely fine with me as the opponent's going to go and fire off the charge reeve and it is just a body sound there which means we can go for a full march off farm down and i will be able to outpace this diggers me to the next charge reeve as they're not running fire punch we go for the earthquake we only get a great there because we just continuously get more starters but earthquake still able to get the ko even as a great there and i'm able to take that game 
So GG to open there into the next battle, can see a Wigglytuff in the lead, so of course, not a great matchup for us, Icy Wind will get the one shot by the time they do reach it, but what I'm going to do is essentially bank back to back aerial aces, or at least bank a second aerial ace, and then swap into my Vigoroth, so going to shield that they actually don't debuff my attack, so I didn't really need to swap out there, but either way we come in with the Vigoroth, we get the counter farm down, and they're going to come in with a Quagsire, which honestly, not bad to see it here, obviously my Stunfisk definitely does not want to see Quagsire, so I don't mind this, but if they're are running like double mud boys then that might be an issue for us but either way we're gonna go and fire off the second body sam body sam is gonna be no shield once again and we throw it on the cmp tie they go for a mud bomb there mud bomb will not put me into mud shot farm damage, range which means they have to throw a second charge move this one, my bottom, does get the KO. We can come in with the Glide Guard, go for a huge wing attack farm down, but they come in with Talon Flame, and again, this is looking very tricky for us. We can go for the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace grabs a shield. We're going to come in with our Stunfisk, and I need to make it to back-to-back -to -back rock sides here, but I just don't think I'm going to get there. I need to no-shield the first move, essentially, because, of course, Flame Charge is going to ramp up their attack, but Flame Charge is probably going to get a KO from this range. Flame Charge does get the KO there. And this one, my only win condition is if I can live one incinerate. So I'm going to shield this, go for two wing attacks, and we're not able to do so. So of course, incinerate gets the KO there, and we do lose that game. But a single aerial ace would not get the KO, so I needed to go for two wing attacks, throw the aerial ace, and then I would have maybe just barely made it to a second aerial ace there if we lived the incinerate damage. But either way, into next battle, we're going to swap into Vigoroth, and the opponent does not respect the damage, and we actually do get the KO with the rock side there. But of course, we did chip them with a few counters, and that's going to completely change this game here because if the opponent just double shields honestly they can fully incinerate farm down my vigor off and we're just going to lose straight away but either way we're not going to fire off back to back body sams the opponent doesn't shield anything i don't really know what's going on here but either way we're just going to come in with the gligar we get the snipe gonna let the move go through here as they go for a grass knot we're gonna go and over farm firing off an aerial ace i don't expect them to well okay never mind they they just continuously no shield i don't know what their game plan here is here is at this point but we've got a bit of energy i'm gonna over farm here i'm gonna make it to another charge move and at this point i'm thinking surely they're just gonna let go but no the opponent is going to finally start using some shields but it doesn't really matter at this point gonna no shield this as they go for a rock side we can come in with the stunfisk and i can just let any move go through here and we can commit to a full mud shot farm down so the opponent goes for a grass knot doesn't do much damage we get the mud shot farm down and i'm able to take that game so GG to up over there, bit of a strange game, but into the next battle, can see Talon Flame in the lead once again. So once again, not really ideal for us. We are going to see the opponent is actually lagging a ton here. So I'm gonna farm up to where I would be if the opponent did just play out this match up here and they will finally be able to start attacking so i'm gonna let them catch up here I'm gonna go and fire off the aerial ace just as they're reaching their first charge move so now things should be fine here assuming they don't lag anymore they're gonna go and fire off a charge move they go for a flame charge i'm going to stay in with my gligar and we do just barely make it to another aerial ace so if they didn't lag there this is exactly how i would have played out this matchup anyway so it doesn't really make a difference there we can now come in with the vigor of a shiver to shield once and then go for a full counter farm down they go for fly there and we are able to get that farm down which is very nice they're going to come in with a gastrodon though which is a little bit of an issue for our stunfisk in the back so hopefully they do just let these body sams go through they let the first one go through they're also going to fire off a body sam which isn't going to do much damage but it might put me into muds that farm down range and actually i think that probably will be the case here so we're going to go and fire off body sam number two body sam grabs the shield they swap into a shadow victory belt running magical leaf as the fast move and unfortunately means they're going to be very spammy to make it to these leaf blades. First one already coming through. And at this point, I'm not really sure what my plan is. I need to throw a rock side and maybe undercharge this slightly. I'm not certain how much damage this is going to do. So I actually just fully charge it. And rock side does unfortunately get the KO there, which means I'm not able to make it to the earthquake. The opponent can outpace me to the body Sam. And even if they didn't reach the body Sam here, they would have got the mods that farm down before I made it to my own body Sam. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's top opponent there into next battle. We can see Victory Belt in the lead this time around, and they are running Razor Leaf this time around. So this is pretty good for us. The opponent's going to swap into a cast form. So probably not expecting to see a Vigoroth counter swap here. Previously, cast form pretty difficult to use in limited metas because, of course, Vigoroth is going to double resist the hex damage. And of course, Vigoroth used to be very common in limited metas. Used to be the king of pretty much every limited meta where normal types were allowed. 
But either way, gonna go and fire off the Body Sam there. Gonna go for another Body Sam into the Victory Well coming back in. Body Sam is gonna grab a shield here. They will be able to raise Leaf, farm me down. But I can just come in with my Gligar and go straight for an area. The opponent does not throw their charge moves. And they're actually just gonna fully sacrifice it. Coming in with a Shadow Rhyperia there. But unfortunately for them, we're going straight for Dig. And Dig is gonna connect. It gets no shielded. And it completely one-shots the Shadow Rhyperia. And I'm able to take that game. So GG start playing there into next battle because he a Swampert in the lead. So this is a matchup where I think previously Shadow Gligar could just barely live a charge move from the Swampert, but I don't really want to tank a Hydro Cannon. So I'm going to shield the first one anyways, then fire off an Aerial Ace. I'm expecting to grab a shield, which is why I go for the Aerial Ace here, but the opponent actually lets that go through. I don't think Dig would quite get the KO anyways, especially since it was nerfed. So we swap into our Vigor off. The opponent's going to come in with a Serena here, which is very interesting. And we get more starter lag, which means I'm forced to throw on a line and give a full magical leaf in for free luckily for me the opponent doesn't commit to a full farm down though but they're gonna be running triple axle which is very dangerous for my shadow gligar but i'm hoping we can just go for a full wing attack farm down before they do make it to another charge reef and we get that farm down which is huge the opponent is going to wait up the switch clock here they're going to come back in with their swampert and i should be able to go for a full farm down the opponent recognizes that so they come in with the final pokemon which is going to be a chandelure so i'm going to go for two wing attacks fire off the next dig here and then I'm going to swap into my Galarian Stunfisk. Now, of course, they will be able to go for a Flame Charge straight away, but assuming I don't lag here, I should be able to outpace them to the Rock side on the next charge for you. So you're going to go for four mud shots, and we do actually stutter, but I'm just barely able to throw the Rock side here in time. Rock side gets the KO, and one more mud shot actually takes out the Swampert from that range, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's top there into next battle because he Quagsire in the lead once again. So this kind of just depends if they're running Octel or not. And again, the opponent is going to over farm here. We're going to throw on the CMP tie. It looks like we lose CMP here up against Quagsire. I don't know if that's IV dependent. I don't really play Quagsire or Gligar, so don't really know. But either way, going to go and fire off the Aerial Ace. And they are running Stone Age, which means... This is just going to be a Mud Bomb, unless they're running Stone Age and Aquatel, and for some reason went for the Stone Age first. But nope, it is just the Mud Bomb, which means I can actually undercharge this just slightly. Do not undercharge it too much, just in case the opponent decided to swap out of that matchup. But they're going to come in with a Ferrothorn. So I'm actually going to throw on the CMP tie, which is very good for me. The opponent could have committed to a full farm down there, but they don't. They throw their energy, and that is huge, because now, of course, they're going to be energy dry as they go for the Power Whip. We can come in with the Vigor off, and they've got a Tunnel Flame in the back. And once again, even though I've got two Pokemon, with Rock Slide in the back. This is not that great of a matchup for me. I let that go through there. I'm thinking I can still make it to a Body Sam and then a Rock Slide here if we let the move go through. But that turns out to be not the case. And we don't even get close to the Rock Slide there, which is pretty, pretty horrible. And at this point, it's game over. I'm going to shield. I've still got two shields, so I use my first one. But they will make it to another charge move. I have to over farm here. But if the opponent wants to, they can just swap out of this matchup at this point. They swap back into the Ferrothorn. And I need to grab a shield here with a rock side. I go for the bait. Rock side gets called. And yeah, this is going to be game over. If I full sent the earthquake as well, that would have been awful for me because it means that the tunnel flame could come in and just outpace me to a charge move before I make it to back to back rock sides. So at that point, there wasn't really any way for me to win. But either way, GG's to that point there. Into next battle, gonna see a Shadow Quagsire in the lead once again. And this time, they are gonna go and fire off an Arcotel straight away. So I'm gonna no shield this. Arcotel does some pretty big damage in this matchup. We're gonna go and full send the dig here as I don't plan on shielding so might as well go for the dig but the opponent actually shields that up so not really ideal for me but i'm just gonna let the glygar go down at this point we are double weak to the shadow quagsire so might as well just let it go come in with my vigor off and the opponent is gonna go and fire off another aquatel there and at this point you're gonna see the opponent is able to throw a charge move as they're still getting the mud shots through which is really annoying for me i did want to throw a body sam there on the CMP tie, but now I'm going to throw a Body Sam as they reach the next, Ar next Arquitel there, which is fine. Body Sam will get the KO. They come in with the Talon Flame, and again, not ideal, but I do have an energy advantage. So going straight for the Rock Side. Rock Side is actually no shielded by the opponent, and they stay in there, and I'm able to get the Snipe with my Stunfisk, get the Mudshot Farm down, and this is going to be game over. They come in with a Clodsire. Again, we stutter, which means I actually don't throw the Charge Move on CMP. They go for an Earthquake, but you can see we do tank that reasonably comfortably. Well, not that 
that comfortably, but they're, they're never going to be able to poison sting, farm me down, and even going for like a stone edge or a sludge bomb, won't get the KO, so I did consider no shielding here for the flex, but either way, I play it safe there, just because we're lagging so much, I'm not sure if maybe they did get extra energy in there, but either way, Earthquake still doesn't get the KO, but we get the mud shot farm down, and I'm able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video, if you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already, and if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications, that way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video, and if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member, your support is greatly appreciated, and with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.